Welcome back to the channel where I give you my recommendations up front for new streaming content. And then I go and actually do the justification afterwards. So today I'm going to go and actually give you my recommendations for chaos on Netflix for target audience members. Those are people that are into Greek mythology, dark comedies, things of that nature. And especially if you're a fan of Jeff Goldblum, I'm going to say that you watch the first two episodes of this series for casual viewers, not really into all that kind of stuff. Just curious to see if this is worth a look. I'm going to tell you to go and actually give it a one episode watch. Now stay tuned as I give you the reasons why I came with those recommendations. The Wayne, the family falls, and chaos reigns. So Chaos is a dark comedy that premiered on Netflix in August of 2024. The first season consists of eight episodes that are about 55 minutes each. They're based on familiar Greek mythologies with updated characters and settings. Now it stars Jeff Goldblum as Zeus, Janet McTeer as Hera, and Stephen Delane as Prometheus. Here's the story that we have for this particular series. The all-powerful yet insecure god Zeus starts to fear his end of reign once he notices a wrinkle on his forehead, possibly indicating the end of the world. He becomes paranoid and vengeful towards his devotees. Meanwhile, there's three humans that start to discover their connections with each other and grand conspiracies involving the Greek gods. So here you have a lot of different things going actually going on with this particular series and it all centers around my guy Zeus. Now I've always been fascinated with Greek mythology, uh, the conflict between Greek gods and the Titans or the infighting that happens amongst the gods on Olympus or the battle of gods versus mortals, all that kind of stuff on there. It's all very much intriguing. Now the attempts to kind of move the mythology to like modern times can be like up and down for me. I've seen it where it's kind of worked and then there's other times where it flops and those types of things kind of really kind of just put it in. Eh, it can kind of like give and take for me. Cause like there's a good example of like, let's just say the Percy Jackson series, right? Percy Jackson and the lightning thief movie was horrible. It was just, it was not good the way that they would actually modernize that. But Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the series that's on Disney plus that actually is a pretty good adaptation. Same IP, same stuff, Greek mythology modernizing it two different ways to take it or what have you so for me this is probably going to be a series where i'm going to be neutral i'm going to be on the fence on this one just because i've seen it be wrecked way too many times now the reason why i go ahead and actually give you my perspective on various different things is because i feel you should always know the perspective of your viewers so you can go ahead and actually have that in mind when you are looking at these recommendations because your reviewers got a bias and i've got mine but here i'm a little bit neutral so take it with a grain of salt now, for me, I go and actually watch the first two episodes of brand new streaming content just to see if it's worth your time. I watch it so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let's talk about chaos. Now, after I watched the first two episodes of this particular series, I went ahead and actually it was kind of like the, the camera on, on Netflix, along with like Percy Jackson and the Olympians. So it's kind of a mesh of those type, two types of things, modern takes, uh, mythology a little bit a little bit of old school flavor to it with a little modern take on it and those are kind of the series that really kind of really permeate my brain after i watched these first two episodes so here's some of my highlights of those first two episodes and then i'll get you my grades for a couple different things so in regards to the episodes on there it will go ahead and actually they're set in modern day greece so it was a very vibrant setting for the show. You can see that the setting was really good. It was really vibrant. Really like everything that's moving or whatever. Really love that. Jeff Goldblum was Jeff Goldblum in here. Uh, there's just no other way to go and actually describe it. You could tell that he loved playing this character. He was bringing it a game all the way. There was there's also an established prophecy that's in here that kind of makes it one of those types of things of an intriguing watch. So when you go and actually have some type of intriguing aspect of prophecy or whatever, that's very good in these first two episodes. They kind of go back and forth with the drama and the comedy in here, which is a pretty good balance because anytime that you go get too much of one, they kind of balance it out or whatever. So I like that they went and actually did that. And then there's a lot of characters, a lot of stories that are supposed to intertwine with here. If you're a person that doesn't like to follow a lot of storylines, it's probably not going to be the show for you, but they are very much interwoven and have that out there for you. So those are kind of my initial thoughts of the episodes. In regards to the storytelling, storytelling, I'm going to go and actually say is a B. The pacing of the show can definitely be slow at times, um, and it definitely takes time, takes its time to flesh out each scene and each character. In some situations, this is totally welcomed. Um, and then there's other ones where it's a little bit frustrating of the pacing aspect of it. But the comedy is definitely an acquired taste. Um, if you're not into dark comedies, it probably 
it's probably not going to be your thing. But if you are, they, they got you. They got you covered really well. What is this place? Why didn't I turn to stone? Because you're fucking dead. And while the comedy isn't so much my thing because I'm not into dark comedies, I can go and actually tell you uh, the story is definitely intriguing from the prophecy aspects of things. And they're they're writing deep characters that definitely have some good backstory to them. So I like the writing aspect of it. And the thoughtfulness of everything on there kind of shows you that there's good, solid writing on this. So for the storytelling, we got a B. For acting, going A- minus on this one. Um, Jeff Goldblum is a fool throughout this. Loved it. Uh, he's taking his take on a paranoid, vengeful Zeus is excellent. It's one of those types of things where you're just like, dude, he's eating up the screen every single time. Likewise with Janet uh, McTeer as Hera, she uh, when she's in her different scenes on there, she has that menacing you know approach or whatever. That's the, probably the only one that can really kind of be on the same level with Zeus or whatever. So very nice there. Um, and Stephen Delaney, Delaney is as Prometheus is very good. It's kind of like that off centered uh, character. Because uh, a lot of times he's actually speaking to us, the audience, uh, with his inner thoughts or what have you. And there's a good delivery system on what he really thinks about what's going on and about the story. He's kind of like the overarching narrator that kind of gets you into some of the scenes or what have you. So I really like that. The rest of the supporting cast seems to be having fun. And they definitely pick it up a notch when they're interacting with one of those other three characters. And you can kind of see that they kind of bring out the best of them. But even when they're by themselves, they're doing a pretty good job. Overall, you're looking at solid casting and a lot of effort going into the craziness that is chaos. So overall, this is a worthwhile comedy to give a watch if you're into dark comedies um, or into Greek mythology. Watch it at least two episodes to see if you vibe with the story and the setting. And there's enough with the acting to keep you entertained while you're trying to make that decision. For casuals, really all you're gonna need to do is see one episode to see if, if this is your thing or not. You don't really have to go to the second episode. You'll kind of be able to pick it up, but it's worth at least a one episode to watch. And that's what I have for Chaos on Netflix Check it out. You stay for the entire review. I appreciate you. Do me a favor. Click like, share, subscribe if you like anything on this. Uh, but if not, you can also leave a comment down below. Let me know what I got wrong, what you don't agree with, all that kind of good stuff. Do me a favor. You can also watch one of these other videos that the algorithm seems to think that you might like of mine. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.